Hi everyone, my name is Janetta Workman. I work at Heartland Human Services as a substance abuse counselor and we're going to do the disguised disaster room for you today. Uh, so cursory glance it looks just like a teenager's bedroom and that's what we want it to look like until we find all of the hidden things that are in here. So I'm going to start over here by the bed. Um, Pillowcases can be a good place to hide things. Uh, we have paint in here that kids actually will huff because the fumes can get you high. Um, so we have that in there. And there are breath mints on the bed, which aren't super unusual. Breath mints, gum, anything like that can be used to cover the smell of alcohol or marijuana use. Um, trying to think here. I have a weight scale under the bed that I had hidden and it will, you turn it on and you can weigh the amount of a drug that you have. It'll weigh it in ounces, grams, whatever unit you need. Um, this is especially good for any kind of dealer. And I recently learned that it is actually a felony for you to have a scale um, in any capacity if they find any kind of drug residue on it. So that it was an interesting piece of information that I wasn't 100% aware of until recently. There's also a whipped cream can under here. And so a, what a lot, the, this was $1.50 at Walmart, super cheap. What you do, in order to get the pressurized air from in here that shoots out your whipped cream, you put it to the side and you inhale it and it has a, it has a feeling of getting high for that. But you don't put anything in it or alter anything? Mm -hmm. You just put the whipped cream itself? Yep. So you don't want the actual whipped cream, you want the air that forces all the whipped cream out. And um, that has, I believe, I can't remember what it's called. There, there's some kind of substance in here that helps pressurize that will allow you to get high from the fumes. So as they're squeezing them out, they're also in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, another clue with that is it's not in the refrigerator. <laughs> Uh, air duster, you have the same concept, so this can be something that you inhale in order to get high. It's just a little bit different method, okay? We do have a candle in here that we use in order, they can light it in order to cover smells up, um, just as kind of a diffusion of, typically marijuana is the most powerful one that you smell and a candle would be useful for something like that to get rid of the smell of it. But the smell's still on the draperies and everything in the room. Yep, yep. Uh, this is another paint bag. So you can put paint in it and then you just kind of, you lift it to your face and you can inhale the fumes from that. Um, this is, a tanning bottle that can be emptied, washed out, and refilled with alcohol and not look any different. So unless you're really looking for it, you wouldn't typically see it. Um, so that's why we have this in here. Uh, one of the next things we have is, it's kind of a weird little contraption, but you take a bottle, a soda bottle, you cut the bottom off and you put fabric softener inside of it and add a sock over it. And as you exhale uh, your marijuana, you blow it into the bottle top. It goes through the filter, comes out the sock, and it's not supposed to smell as strongly. So it's also supposed to be a diffuser of the smell of it. And so these are easy to make. Um, how you can tell they've been used is they'll typically turn a yellowish brown at the top where the smoke has touched it. 
and it's kind of weird to have a sock on your soda bottle there so we have all of the little alcohol shooters um, and that's what these mixed drinks are for as well a lot of kids like to mix their drinks they won't typically just take one or the other they'll mix them together um, they call them chasers if you shoot one chase it with a with a drink um, and this is just a small pack that they can come in um, they can also be hidden in sports bottles so you can take your top off mix that you can mix it with Powerade you can mix it with Monster or any kind of soda and it just looks like the soda it doesn't really take on a different color you don't really know unless you smell it what's in there you can also mix cold medicine with things like monster or mountain dew or even the powerade um, there's a couple different names for this one is it's an old one it's scissorp and then there's also um, there's a few other names too that they use for it um, using just cough medicine can sometimes be called triple c's and th this can be used for a variety of different things but the biggest thing it has in it is um, codeine and the codeine it gives you like a, a drinking effect without having alcohol which is why they have age limits on these now you have to be i think 18 to purchase them in store. Under the clothes here, I just have another mixing bottle that kids can use to mix their alcohol and chaser with. Um, the soda can can be used to do what is called free basing. So some kids have pipes to smoke out of or hitters to smoke out of. You don't technically need one in order to smoke pot or any other kind of substance. Um, so what you would do is you put your pot on the top and then you light it and you just inhale. Okay. So it's a very simple method. It's a very cheap method. It's super easy to get a can and, um, free basing is, is what the form of that is called this pillow we have there's a bottom to it where you could hide more items in which is why we have it included with this room um, this one actually doesn't open um, but there are others that do that you can sneak things into The next piece that I have is this book. Um, and we have had the center cut out of it. And you can hide different objects in there. Uh, this one held a vape. So, and this vape doesn't have the top on it, but this is the smoking piece of the vape that recharges. Um, that kids are typically around this size that the kids are smoking. Um, and the book is very simple to convert into whatever you want. It looks very average on the outside. And then you open it and find what you're wanting to hide out of there. Let's see. Red Bull, Monsters, Mountain Dew, the Powerade. These are all mixers to chase alcohol with typically okay this one is kind of fun so looks like a monster can right these can be ordered off Amazon the top come out and it's hollow inside it's heavy like a monster can it looks like exactly like one but there's nothing in the middle of it there's no fluid so in here I put a few things I 
I put the inside of a pin that can be a makeshift hitter. So you take your pot, you stuff it in there with a paper clip that you can find anywhere. You unbend, you put it in there, you light the end, you smoke this end. So that's pretty simple. Um, a lot of people use zebra pens. They can also, so if you don't like the plastic part, you can also use the heavier duty plastic piece of this pen. And it's the same concept. You just load this piece, you light this piece, you smoke out of the top of the pen. So these are pretty easy access where you don't have to go to a store and buy a hitter. You just buy a pen, break it apart, and do what you need to do to smoke. There is also a syringe and rubber bands that I hid in the, in the monster. And these are more used for when kids are shooting drugs because it does happen. Um, typically, the ones that you shoot are going to be meth around here. Um, sometimes heroin, I haven't had very many kids that have used heroin. Um, but this is just an example of what they can hide in a syringe. The next piece is a, the next piece is the apple. I didn't cut it out, but you can actually make a hitter out of an apple. Um, Essentially what you do is you push enough to make a hole right here and then you can load that and smoke out of it. So it's a, it's, it's a very inventive way. It's a very different way. Um, I don't see it very often. It's a lot more work than it's really worth sometimes, but it can be done. Um, so there's that one. In here, it looks like an empty pouch in here. And underneath, we've actually hidden energy pills. Ooh, yep. And these are for, to kind of counteract the effects that marijuana or alcohol have. You start feeling sleepy. It's a, what they call a downer. So this is kind of an upper to help reverse those effects. And these can be bought um, at a gas station anywhere. I don't think there's an age on them. They can be bought by anyone at any time. In our little bag here, I have tin foil. Tin foil is like the soda can that you can use to put your marijuana or your other substance in there, you light it and you smoke it straight from the foil. Um, these are also very easy to get a hold of. Anybody can buy this at any kind of store. We have a rolled up dollar bill in order to snort cocaine that a lot of kids will use. And they'll also have some type of card to make their lines with and use the dollar bill to snort. Uh, we have long cut chew in here that kids can use as an alternative to smoking cigarettes or an e-cigarette. There are eye drops that kids can use in order to counteract the red effect, the red eye effect that happens when smoking pot a lot of times. We have cigarette swishers, which are typically two for a dollar at a gas station. Um, you just have to be old enough to buy cigars or cigarettes, so 21 now. And what a lot of people do is they will take out the tobacco from inside the cigar, keep the wrapper nice, they'll put marijuana in that and they'll re-roll it, and that's how you smoke a blunt. That is what a blunt is. 
Okay. Here we have our little CBD gummies that we're using. Um, so with medical marijuana becoming more um, enhanced within the community and within society, we have a lot of these types of things coming about um, where the THC is actually added into the gummy bears, they are able to be eaten and the effects take about 30 minutes to go into effect. I have a Brillo pad here. Um, it's also another form of free base. So you would actually just maneuver it the way that you want, load your marijuana or other substance on top of it, light it and smoke it directly from the Brillo pad. There's an Ace of Spades card here, um, which can be used to line your coke up before you are snorting it. And it's also a sign, it's a drug symbol that can be used um, as well. My last two items here, I have a, this is for nicotine. This is, um, 35 milligrams of nicotine in this small bottle. And these are what are typically put in the vapes. So this one isn't reloadable, but they are put in vapes about this size and are smoked. So that's kind of, that's what's in the jewel pods. That's that kids are just buying and reloading as they want to. Um, and one milligram of nicotine is about equal to one cigarette. So this bottle is about 35 cigarettes, which is almost two packs. So last but not least here, we have a weed grinder. Um, this one is magnetic. So the top comes off and it has little bits on the top and the bottom where you place your pot when it's in bundles in there, you put your lid on, you grind it, it will go through a sifting process. So it goes through these little holes and it goes through the sifter to get all the big chunks out, your seeds, your stems. And then at the bottom, what you're left with are the finer grains of pot that you would put in a blunt, in a joint, to freebase anything with. So this would be your finished product right here. Okay, and you can scrape that out with this little tool. And it's very small, it's very compact. You, I don't know that you'd know what it is unless you know what you're looking for, so it's a pretty, um, and you can get these off Amazon as well. Majority of this stuff you can buy anywhere. And I think that's everything we have hidden. Is there anything that I missed? About 420 sign. Ah, yeah. Uh, the 420 sign is just a It's a slang term for marijuana use. Yep, pop culture. It's something that a lot of kids are really into. April 20th comes around and they think that that is the, all the day of marijuana smoking. So it's something they can, they refer to in order for, yeah, yep. It really just, it's just a symbol that a lot of kids use. So right now yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Now I heard on on a radio talk show that the CBD mm -hmm. stuff that they can't get high from that. CBD is different than THC. So CBD is a derivative of marijuana, the marijuana plant that is solely for anxiety, pain, seizures. 
those types of things. And it has, they can't completely take all of the THC out of it, which makes you high. They can't, they derive a lot of it out, but there's usually a small amount that's left over. So CBD is different than the THC gummies, um, but those health effects that are the reason it's medical marijuana now comes from the CBD portion. Kids mostly use it for the THC piece though. They want the feel good high. They don't really need a lot of the health effects at that point. So if they wanted to, they could, they could get high off of enough of the CBD gummies. Theoretically, theoretically, yes. In order for a parent to stay one step ahead, mm -hmm. so they see something in their child's room that alarms them, but going to them directly could blow the cover, if you will. So how is it that you would share information with us as parents if we see something in the room? How do we play that out without um, having it immediately um, come to their knowledge? I think it really depends on what your goal is. Um, so some parents are looking for a reason for their kid to get in trouble, right? Others, it comes from a place of concern. Um, so sometimes I think that difference is important, asking what is this to you what is this if you know different then you know different but I mean you want to see if they're being honest because some kids will be they'll be like well this is what I use to get high and then that's a different approach than lying um, but it, it really also is what you're wanting to get out of it I, I don't suppose a lot of parents are gonna report their children to the police about drug use with marijuana and alcohol. Um, however, it, at some point you will have to confront them with it and they don't need it. Uh, so confiscating it is I think an important piece too. Can I answer your question? Kind of, okay. Any other questions? Any of the methods that you guys didn't really get that we talked about? The freebasing is different than using a pen or um, even an e-cigarette. They are deriving a lot of marijuana into liquid now that you can put into e-cigarettes and smoke that way. Um, typically they're, they're what's called dabs. And so that is a where CBD is a derivative of all the health benefits, dabs are the opposite. It's taking everything out but the THC and making it into a more powerful form of marijuana. And um, they are a sticky yellowish brown color and a lot of times you have to buy them pre-filled. Um, and it's like as soon as that one's gone, you have to throw the top away and get a new one. You don't, you don't refill it like you would with some of the nicotine stuff. Okay. Any other questions? What do you see about the tanning lotion? Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. What would they put in there? They, okay, so if, if they use all the tanning lotion or if they buy it and don't want it, they can dump it all out, rinse it and they can um, put mixed drinks in there or even just regular alcohol and it's just an easier way of carrying it around without getting into trouble. Mm -hmm. What percentage of, you know, when I was growing up it was always, it was such a dangerous thing because it was a gateway drug mm -hmm. and then the argument came out, no, 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 mm -hmm. it's just a recreational thing and blah, blah, blah. And now I'm reading again, it's a gateway drug. So how many of them stop with marijuana? Not very many. I think it really depends. Um, a lot of times what you're seeing is it is more acceptable now, especially with parents. And so their parents, if their parents aren't making a big deal about it, the kid is less likely to stop. Um, if the parent's going overboard about it, the kid's more likely to keep doing it as a way to say, you can't tell me everything to do. So I think it's really situational. Um, I know a lot of kids try it for the first time, grade school, high school age, 
there have been a lot of, they're starting to be more 11, 12, 13 year olds that I see that come in and have used it or have gotten caught with something, paraphernalia typically, of where they have used it. So the age ranges vary, but I would say anywhere from that junior high to high school range is what you're looking at. And I would say 50%. About half. It's not to encourage you. Nope. Other questions? Comments? What do you see of these methods most typically in your line of work that is most common? It varies. With, with kids, it could be anything. Um, typically, whatever is easiest to get a hold of. Um, whatever, whatever is most accessible. As they become adults, they become a little pickier about what they'll use. I don't need to smoke out of a soda can. I don't have to smoke out of a soda can. I know where I can get a hitter. And I'm old enough to buy one, so it's not illegal for me to have. So I think as children are smoking that, I think a lot of times m making a pen into one is easiest. Uh, Freebasing is also easy. Sew off of a can or tin foil. Those are things you're likely to find around your home. Pens are likely, you're likely to find around your home that they are able to have access to and turn it into something that it's not meant to be used for. Hmm? The racial boys and girls about the same. That I've seen, yes. Yes. Won't well, doing it out of some of this stuff make them sick, like the the Brillo pad and the the, the plastic from the ink pen? Won't, won't the, that in itself make them sick? The ink pen, the plastic, um, plastic burns at a certain point. Well, it melts more than anything, um, so it could. But typically, they're it's they're doing it so quickly and then just throwing it away. So it's not something they're using more than once. Um, it's a very quick, easy. If I do this, I can smoke really quick kind of option. Um, the Brillo pads were actually something new to me. I have never had someone tell me that they've smoked off a Brillo pad. I just know that you can. Um, I, it's not, I would imagine that it would make you sick because there are other chemicals on it that you're also inhaling. So I can't imagine that it's safe, but. inhaling a little bit of fibers. The metal. Metal. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because they're not thinking about their health, I guess. No. <laughs> no, it's, it's typically impulsive and what they can do to get high the fastest. Yep. Are there resources that people can look for? Yes, we actually have papers um, on the back table there that have a list of resources and facts from, we spoke with hospitals. Uh, the police station and like what we would do in a mental health situation like where where I work at um, and those are available on the back table there and they're all stapled together so feel free to help yourself to those we do have a lot of I, I believe local numbers um, there are resources on there for rehabs for kids um, we don't recommend them a lot just because they're not typically effective. Kids, when you put them together, tend to cause more issues as a team than be rehabilitated. So it's something that we find one-on-one um, -on -one therapy is really more um, effective than rehabilitation. Uh, but if you have a child severe enough, then it's... It's a little bit different story. Okay. So I have a lot of kids that come to me to do community service while I work that are, they're doing their community service because of meth. Mm -hmm. Now we're working around senior citizens. Is there mm -hmm. anything you can tell me that I should look for that I might not know? Do you know how often they're being drug tested? Uh -huh. It depends on their charges. 
Because I wouldn't know how somebody reacts if they're high on meth. So. Meth, you're going to get, um, meth is a stimulant. So whereas marijuana and alcohol are depressants, they slow everything down, they make everything chill, it, it, everything flows. Meth is a stimulant, so it's going to, you're gonna have kids bouncing off the wall. You're gonna have them not know when to shut up <laughs> or to settle down. You're gonna have kids that um, they can't, they're pressured to talk. They don't know how to stop talking there is something that's telling them in their brain that they need to continue. Um, their eyes dilate really big. Um, they call it tweaking for a reason um, because you get that twitch, you kind of like, you're just very jittery. You can't make your body stop going. So those are some of the physical signs to look for. Um, as far as paraphernalia, I wouldn't think that they would bring paraphernalia in for community service. No, I don't think, because most of them don't even bring personal. Every once in a while they go. Of course, the guys have their pockets, but. Yeah, I yeah. Think too many guys sent to me. But it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be anything out in the open that you would be like, I think I know what that is. <laughs> it's, so it, it would be concealed. But as far as behaviors go, it, you're looking for that pressured to talk, pressured to keep going, pressured to keep moving. They may be very goal oriented. What can I get done today for you? You need this done, you need this done, you need this done, give me a whole list, I'll have it done in 20 minutes. Very, it's very um, fast paced. So I've, I've had a lot of people tell me that when they start using meth, it was, I could clean my whole house in three hours. My house was really clean for a long time. That's why I started using it. Or I started using it to help me lose weight because it, it suppresses your appetite. Um, these kids wouldn't be drinking a lot of any kind of liquid or have food. They wouldn't be hungry if they were high actively. And with marijuana, it's kind of the opposite of like, they're super thirsty because they get caught in mouth and they're really hungry because the drug is telling them to eat. So it, there's, they're kind of the opposites of the spectrum. And cocaine is a stimulant too. So you're looking at those same types of things. Usually it's shorter lived though. Yeah, when they come to me for community service, I say, so what'd you get in trouble for? <laughs> I say, tell me, I'll, I'll, I'll find out myself. <laughs> yep, yep. It's, it all depends. My dad's been smoking pot. It's obvious that you can smell it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And is there an odor to a meth? <sighs> I'm looking at it, surely there is, but on the person? Not that I know of. Um, I can't say that I've been around someone that I know has actively smoked meth right before they've met with me. They, they typically know better. <laughs> um, but... It, not that I'm aware of. I'm sure it does have an odor, but I don't know what it is. Not I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. They all have bad complexions? <laughs> not cool. always. Not always. Um, there's a difference in injecting and smoking. Um, so your smokers are more likely to have the rotted teeth and sometimes they get the sores on the skin. Injecting doesn't typically have those consequences to it. It's a little bit different. Please grab an FAQ sheet off the back table there. Thank you.